All right, so I guess this uh, next 2016, we have four programs, right? Paris, Seoul, and Seville, and Verona. Uh, Paris is coming a little late, so I'm going to start from, from it. Seoul program has been about four years. That's the 2012 with the seven, 16 students, and 13. We somehow started picking up some and some figures while we are taking pictures. <laughs> 14 and 15. So we've been there for f four years. We could say that's the Seoul Studio version 1.0. Now we are moving into 2016. We are buzzing up to the 2.0. The changes in our 2.0 in Seoul Studio 2016. It's going to be only 10 to uh, 8 to 10 students from Texas Tech. And it's currently developing, in a way, a group of students from Uni University of North Carolina, uh, Charlotte. There's one, uh, a couple of students from the Professor Nesbitt will join us at Seoul. And also a group of students from University of New Mexico uh, run by Christina Yu, professor over there, also joining at the Seoul Studio. So uh, we are still in the development stage, but we, it's going to be multi-university working together at the Seoul uh, in the same time. In collaboration, how we're going to do is also in development at this moment. So let's talk about the Seoul. <clears throat> Does anyone know about Seoul? Some, partially. It's 11,000 kilometers, it's 7,000 miles from distance from Lubbock. It's 14 hours ahead, so they are actually tomorrow at some point. And travel time is going to be 15 hours. It's the capital city of South Korea, which uh, so whole capital is about 50.6 million people. Uh, the area is 100 kilo, 100,000 kilometers square. But Seoul is the second largest metropolitan area with over 25.6 million people, which is half the population in South Korea is actually living in a Seoul metropolitan area. So this is a really dense environment, and it's mega megalopolis kind of conditions. When you're looking at the whole South Korea, it's about the size of Indiana state. But there's nine times more people living in there. And half of that people actually living in Seoul, which is on that small areas. Looking at the satellite view about Seoul, uh, about around, around the region, you can see Seoul right there. It looks like a sea, but it's not a sea. It's a North Korea. <laughs> That's the Tokyo. Metro metropolitan area is really dense. There's a river in the middle. It divides north and south. Well, we're calling it, we're calling it uh, Gangpuk and Gangnam. And you might heard about the Gangnam style the song. Actually, that's talking about the south side. 25 million people living in this dense environment. This kind of system that we need, which is the metro, basically subway systems. It's 18 number of lines and 645 stations throughout the whole metropolitan area. And it's about 10 million daily rice ships. 10 million people riding at the subway every day. <coughs> because this is 4601, which is the architectural insertion in urban conditions. So we are looking at the urban condition, the Seoul, also later on in the Tokyo, in a very serious architectural manner. Some of the night views of the Seoul. If you're thinking about the first and second biggest metropolis, it's about 24 hour city. There's no sleeping time. It's keep going and learning 24 hours. 
And that's the view about the Gangnam station, actually, subway station. That's the world Guinness record most used subway station in the world. But contrast with this really modernized condition, there's also old fabric remains in the series. So Seoul Studios kind of ob objective is about the old and new and then conditions, how it adapts and it develops and then changes and continuously changing throughout the uh, histories and the times. We do a lot of measuring, photographic measurings and then drawings, urban conditions, and how the old uh, elements of architectural elements start embedding into the current state and how these new conditions start working together as a one kind of organic structure in terms of urban, urban conditions. A lot of sketches we are doing. Something about the adaptations, how buildings are changing every time. But we can also, we cannot neglect the fact that cultural implications, like uh, how Buddhism started to uh, become a part of it, confusions, how confusion, confusionisms become part of the architectural implementation. When you guys are arriving in May, it's about the time there's a Buddha's birthday festival. So we like to visit temples, and then how these things are becomes a part of the city. But if you walk about three blocks from this location, which is a temple inside of Seoul, we're going to see something like this. Completely modernized, high uh, skyscraper kind of fabric of the series, too. We examine how 26 million people living in a city, then in a large infrastructural level of development, how that implicates uh, life in the citizens in there. That's the well-publicity development in, inside of Seoul. It's called Cheonggyecheon. We measured and do a lot of architectural excursions, basically. In one point, we walked about 21 miles a day. So that's quite impressive. So we see a lot, and we document, we discuss, we embed it into the city somehow. Having this kind of uh, city level green space or landscape within uh, condition is very interesting for us too. But from there, another couple of blocks, then we completely detach from this very dense environment and then going into UNESCO heritage uh, confusion temples too. So this keep changing new and old conditions that we are looking for. And also bring the idea from the traditional architecture, architecture how the levels changes, how it creating an exciting moment and how things are start revealing when you're walking throughout this whole thing. And sometimes we pick up some uh, pirate version of bear-like animals having pictures. And that's the plaza in a Seoul city hall. It also is showing that old structure in the front, which used to be a city hall, but turned that into the library structure and completely different design on the back side looks like a wave in a glass buildings. We also go to the Namsan Tower. So one, one of the night view is actually taken from there. And traditional kind of architecture and a palace placement. The six week, six and a half week of this whole thing is constant observations and also investigation about how this large city is actually you know, moving on and then what's the essence about these urban conditions. 
So we're not going there as a tourist. We're actually going there as an architect or designer and start investigating the conditions. These are the preserved traditional stuff. And then we also visit many, many places that how the traditional architecture has become revitalized into the contemporary conditions. The areas that is constantly changing, it actually showing the good example of how the old structure changing to the new. And even these kind of complicated roof line and then everything become modernized in a way, how, be, how it modernized in a way, really minimalistic conditions too. So you can see the alleys like these conditions, very complicated, a lot of infrastructure, uh, electric lines and then those kind of thing, but also opposite kind of conditions. This is our ride, which is the subways. We're using that almost every time in Seoul and Tokyo. And also kind of investigating like real infrastructures. It's a multi-level highway on top of it, subway go underneath to it, and then there's a path below to it, and like how this vertically things are, you know, working together. On the weekend, we also go to architecture excursions to the couple of different places. So this is six weeks, it's basically a six day studio a week actually. Monday from Monday to Friday we walk at the studio and go to the so like go to the city and then investigating. Saturday we go a little bit further and then <clears throat> looking at a couple of architectures over there too. There's an architecture, uh, architecture police in you know, Anyang art villages. This is done by Kengo Kuma. I think some of you might know. It's a very well-known Japanese architecture. What Japanese architects believe as a second fleet supplies can be coming to the Kengo Kumas. And MVRDV, uh, Dutch architects. It doesn't matter if it's rain or not, we just go and then enjoy. We also pick up uh, strawberry girl and watermelon boys, take a photograph together. Another excursion is called Haiti. A lot of buildings, actually. And Paju is the very, was a very special uh, book city, publication series. And this is the place you might, we can find uh, Stephen Allen's design. I mean, he designed only two or three buildings throughout the whole world. And one building is actually at the Paju book city. These are more into the larger areas, city, and then infrastructure, and then areas. But we also investigate into architecture itself, which as a critical note, one of the big development uh, that actually vitalized the whole campus was the ECC, which is Ihua Campus Center at Dominique Perre. The scale is somehow um, difficult to perceive, but when you're looking at the figures, right? Very unique condition, which is OMA, Ram Klaus and then Jean Nubel and Mario Bota designed one thing, but it's actually three separate buildings, three separate museums. And how old thing become transformed into the new areas, which is it used to be a water purification areas, but that becomes an ecological park really well-designed conditions there too. Everything was underground, with the covered with concrete, but they took it out and then revitalized into the ecological part. It took about six years, actually, 
uh, those kind of plants start growing up because of all the toxic chemicals it used to be there. Sensible architectural insertion into the conditions. But it's not only the big move, but the textures, how that works well with the overall design conditions. Architecture is a strange discipline because sometimes we documenting restrooms. That's the, one of the old uh, tank, but they cut it out, the portions of it, and then turn that into the restroom conditions. Oven, kind of promenade, bring it into the buildings. Uh, very interesting design by Mungyu Choi. And we can also see really early, like 1990s and 80s walk from Morphosis in Seoul too. But also a brand new design from UN Studio in, completed in 2014 actually, Galleria Santa City. The whole building is covered by LED screen and it changes in projects, uh, many things but also old structure, how they're turning into the new structure. A lot of layering and uh, translucency, transparencies. One of the UN studio buildings. Controversial, but also we can develop a lot of discussions about how the city and the buildings and this large construction and politics, economics, start playing into the one location, which is uh, Dongdaemun Design Plaza, designed by Jaha Hadid. This building is so massive, you cannot actually take it by one camera. Last year was uh, kind of, uh, we are lucky because there was 16 architecture uh, school in Seoul, they did the installation over there. So we got to see that and then talking with Korean students about the architectures. About two, fro uh, two blocks from here is 1980s old buildings. So again, playing with the old and new and how we, uh, cities developing is the big agenda for the Seoul studios. Inside of the Gyeongdong State, uh, Gyeongdong Church. And new buildings, a uh, rising kind of star in a Korean architecture group, which is called the Mass Studies. So we look at the city and our architecture as a architectural node conditions. When you're talking about the city, the culture cannot be ignored. Buddha's birthday, there's a big parade in the Seoul, especially this lantern is becomes really vibrant. A lot of temples that we are visiting. 2012 was uh, special because there was Expo. But after that, we are visiting uh, Busan. We also have a collaboration with the Dongso University. So they're giving us a tour about the Busan. Busan is the second biggest city in South Korea. And it's have a really different topographic changes. So how the topography affecting the building and affecting the formation of the uh, city and the urban condition is the big uh, concern about Seoul Studio too. So in here, the steep hill conditions, how the building blocks start to developing throughout the whole uh, mountain areas. Sometimes you eat the food you've never been eating, which is the live octopus. And then when you're talking about the Busan, we cannot ignore that uh, Kupi Mabros, Busan Cinema Center. So this is completely new condition. And the next day in the morning, we go to this beautiful temple actually at the sea. So it's a very emotionally dramatic kind of 
changes. We also go to the traditional market. It's not the right time right now, right? We are getting hungry, but we're going to talk about some food. So this is called banchan, which is a lot of small dishes. A lot of them is vegetarian. And tons of different fish cakes. And we also go to the manufacturing areas too. And then rice cakes. Busan excursion is about two days. So at the end, we're all happy coming back, riding on the KTX, which is the bullet train. It, uh, the speed is 360 kilometer per hour. So it's about 250, to about 200 miles an hour. After 15 minutes, everybody is sleeping. After midterm review, we usually go to Korean League baseball game. It's quite fun. It's quite different with the American baseball game, the whole experience. And we go get to see traditional per percussion kind of musics. And every, every year, we somehow end up being at the Taekwondo kind of demonstration. It was the last year. Going back to the food cultures. Uh, do you guys know Korean food? <laughs> Have you been to Seoul restaurant in the 50th Street? Yeah. It's way better than that. <laughs> Korean barbecues. Spicy chickens. And when you're talking about the Korean food, you can't think without this one, which is kimchi. And then some of you already know like bibimbap, which is very famous. It's kind of strange, but fried chicken is also really famous there too. A lot of students going there for lunch time. And very, it's kind of fatty pork belly usually came from the Jeju Island. It's very special pork for the dinners. So we bring all of this into studio. And then we also work really hard, as you can see from the back of this uh, screen, all of the presentations. That's the studio space you guys will be using for in 2016 too. We make physical models but not, uh, not the building model, but ideal models. When you do the reviews, so get, uh, presentations, it's, it's a formal reviews. We invite seven or eight different architects and then educators from the Seoul, uni Seoul and then also universities. This is a 2016, uh, 15 uh, presentation. We made posters and then postcard. We uh, reserved the gallery, and we also presenting there formally. But you guys worked so hard until that moment. We are also having a lot of fun in the presentation too. Because seven or eight different architects. Some is American, some is Korean. But Koreans who is coming to this review is also educated in the United States or England. We all speak uh, English as common languages. And at the end, it ends up being usually talking about the city and the architecture and all of different forces, like political, economical, how it kind of implicating architect architectural conditions in the cities. So it's a really exciting moment, right? Final review is not, you know, ending point, but this actually opens up the other questions too. If there is an architecture venue in a Seoul, we also going there too. So last year, actually 2014, do you, do you know who is that guy with the white glasses? Yeah, we met Toyo Ito at the presentation. 
and we see his presentation, we talk to them, and he actually talked to us, right? When you go, come to the Tokyo, you can visit the offices, but at the time, we, when we went to the Tokyo, uh, he was out of Japan, so we couldn't get there. That's the host university, which is Konguk University. So after this intense five and a half week of the studio, we go to Tokyo. It's the italic and little t stands for Tokyo. Tokyo is the, the, the largest metropolitan area in the world with 37 million people inside. So this is the view that you're gonna see on the day you arrive in Tokyo. We go to the Tokyo Metropolitan Office uh, observation deck and then seeing the whole series. Uh, not whole series, basically. You can't see the end of it. Basically. And also going into the, the biggest seafood market, which is Chiki's market. And then we can have some nice breakfast, sushi or sashimi. Some might have a gold flake on top of it. It's also, it could be a really uh, unique experience because Chiki's market is moving. They are closing this and moving into the other location. So 2016 is the last, last year we can actually go walk around the Chukis market and then eat breakfast sushi over there. <laughs> 37 million people and how the cost of the land dramatically changing the architecture is also we can clearly examine from the walking around the cities. We are not, all of this is not a tour. We actually going there as an architect and then we're talking about the city and how these things are changing. Some of you already know this Nakagin capsule tower by Kishu, there's a type of Kishu Gurogawa in 1980s kind of key example of the metabolistic movement in you know, Japanese architecture. And Tokyo International Forum by Rafael Vinoli. Some of you might already know this from the structure books. And Renzo Piano, Hermes Ginja. <coughs> These kind of elevations somehow deceiving us because when you're looking at the actual size of that glass block, you can see it's, it's a, it starts to losing the level, start to losing every floor and becomes different animals. Yoyogi National Gymnasium by Ken, uh, Kenjo Danke. Last year was, we were lucky again, so because there is, there is a baseball, uh, basketball game inside, so we can go inside and then see interiors too. And when you're talking about the Japanese architecture, we, can, we cannot uh, talk about the Japanese architecture without Ando Tado. Design 2121 in, in, uh, is an exquisite kind of building. Also, every year the exhibition is excellent in there too. Very clean design. And Ando's work, you gotta touch the concrete. How well it's constructed. We're putting new <coughs> buildings every year. Uh, Kajio Sejima, which is a sauna, uh, Okurayama apartment, is in the middle of the Yokohama direction. So we start there and looking at this. And next year, we're gonna go Kanazawa, which is Kanazawa Art Museum by Sana. <coughs> and then we are arriving at Yokohama. Somehow devoted whole trip to that building, not building, the infrastructure, which is Osambashi Pier. 
you come on a ferry terminals. And you recognize that my desktop is actually these images. From there, looking back to the Yokohama areas. And Yokohama is uh, something special because they have the biggest Chinatown ice outside of China, too. So, a lot of food. If this is, looks so traditional, then in a way back, we're going to arrive at the Sibuya. And this is very in famous kind of intersection, five different traffic. And in one moment, everything stops and everybody crossing the walk. Recent uh, completion was the Kishiguro Gawas, now the National Art Center. Even in Japan, we're placing old and new kind of conditions. We go to Asakusa too. But in here, upper uh, left corner looks like a wood slate. That's the brand new building by Kengo Kuma too. It's Asakusa Cultural Tourist Information Center. Really well designed, interesting buildings. A lot of buildings actually in Tokyo we are go going and visiting. We usually start starting our excursion at like 8.30 and then we go until like 9 or 10 at night. Because we got to see the building at night too. How the light and then things are changed based on the day, night, day and night conditions. Very simple, but really complex design by Ando Dada's Collezione. A new addition to our excursion was this uh, also newly built Nazu Museum inside of uh, Tokyo by Kengo Kumas. And last year was, uh, this year actually, this year was lucky because after this, visiting this museum, we go and then actually went to the Kengo Kumas office. And that's the conference room at the Kengo Kumas office. And Kengo Kuma was in Tokyo for three days. And then he actually, he was really generous, give us 10 minutes to talk with them and then a couple of questions. So that's the, uh, his private library collections. It's very exciting, actually. So the Seoul Studio 2016 T, you can see a lot of information. Our website is already up. Our program fee and everything is already set. And our schedule is set too. And this is the studio website. You can see all of the previous projects too. So that's the Seoul Studio Wiki website. You can see the uh, website name. And then, that's the Seoul, Seoul Studio uh, website. Has all of the project and then the, the presentation that we did for the Kongo University and then the other universities and all of the people that participate onto this whole thing. Our information meeting is uh, two days from now, Friday at noon, right here at the gallery. Thanks. <laughs>